Praise the Lord. Good afternoon to everyone. And can, can you tell to your neighbor, welcome to the presence of the Lord. Amen. Parang hindi convincing yun ninyo ah. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Napakaganda ng ating uh, ano rito, di ba? Ang uh, team natin. Oh. Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Amen. We are come to celebrate. And we are so excited to be here today. Amen. And uh, to see uh, everyone and uh, some of you uh, I've never seen for two years because of COVID. <laughs> so really exciting. And uh, actually before uh, we got this place, and uh, as we prepare and uh, uh, plan uh, what what we're going to do, what we're going to, how we're going to start here, it really uh, hirap talaga matulog kasi uh, excited kami. <laughs> and we thank the Lord for this place, uh, and for vision niya sa atin, binigay niya sa atin itong lugar na to. And uh, I thank everyone na uh, nagpunta ngayon at uh, amen, yung mga darating pa, patuloy sila ingatan ng Panginoon at pakarating sila na ligtas dito. And uh, to those who are watching right now in uh, online, uh, we are FB in uh, FB live, and uh, actually, hindi natin na sabi sa kanila that uh, our our uh, service will start today at 1 p.m. Sorry for that, and uh, uh, for you also to know that uh, this is our uh, first time na magmeet ang face to face uh, after this uh, because of this uh, COVID-19, and now here in Dubai we can uh, come and uh, freely. Amen. Worship the Lord face to face. Amen. So are you excited as well? Because today uh, we're going to continue with a series of our teaching about Christian basics. Amen. Christian basics. Yeah. Christian basics. And uh, last week, uh, sorry, uh, two weeks ago, uh, we discussed about marriage and uh, family. And if you want to uh, also uh, watch or listen to uh, previous messages, meron po tayo niya sa YouTube. Amen. Naka-record dyan. Amen. Just go to our uh, web uh, YouTube channel and CSG Church Dubai. So Christian Basics, uh, and today we're going to discuss about, we are in the episode 8. And uh, we're going to uh, discuss about suffering and persecution. Wow, Christian Basics pala to. Siguro naisip nyo. And uh, the session one for today is the truth about suffering. If you have your Bible with you, can you open your Bible in 1 Peter 3.17? Amen? So we have come to the church and I God expects us to bring our Bible. Our Bible. And we thank the Lord because in this country, in this land, it's free to uh, carry our Bible. It's free to read our Bible in public. So uh, I encourage you to have your Bible because it's very important, I mean, part of our Christian living, to have our own Bible. If not, uh, are we ha do we have any spare of Bible outside? or We have, yeah, we have Bibles there. So let us read. In 1 Peter 3.17, it says, For it is better if, the will, if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. We bless the name of the Lord for the reading of His word. And as He promised, those who read, those who hear, and observe the things that is written in this book of prophecy will be blessed. We are so blessed today. We have the opportunity to uh, to seek or uh, to uh, learn to study His Word today. So you know we love at many uh, jokes, the same jokes we love, and we are just like we are joyfully sung, Amen, the same song together. But a uh, few things exist when it comes to suffering. Actually, we have uh, uncommon, you can say different experiences when it comes to suffering. And uh, the pain that we experience, the problems that, that we experience is we can see that uh, it's different from person to person about suffering. But what we have read here is we all suffer. We all suffer. 
So this is the reality that is, uh, we can say, the common question, leads to a common question that says, why there is suffering? Amen? Matanong nyo na ba yan? Why does God allow suffering? How could a loving God, amen, allow so much suffering in this world? And if God exists, why there is suffering? So we've been this, uh, you know, uh, constantly happening or part of our life, of our lives, you know, it is uh, very wise for us, amen, to, uh, to seek and to understand uh, how to react when there's suffering or when suffering arrives, happening in our lives, amen. So today we're going to discuss the truth about suffering, the biblical truth about suffering, what the Bible says about suffering, amen. So actually, the first truth we can say is suffering is not related to God's plan. plan. Amen? Suffering is not related to God's plan. That's why in Genesis 2, you can see there that the Lord commanded the man, this is an, uh, in the uh, Garden of Eden, the Lord com God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Amen? He gave them the freedom to enjoy his blessing, freely his blessing. And uh, that's the truth, and we need to recognize that, that it is not related to God's plan in our lives. That's why one of our favorite verses that we hear in Jeremiah 29, it says, Amen. Shall we all read? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. So what happened? So this is not God's plan to harm us or to for us to uh, experience suffering. Why there is suffering? Where does suffering, amen, begins? So suffering is a consequences or the consequences of sin. The next verse to that uh, Genesis two sixteen is of course seventeen. God warned, amen, Adam. That of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall what? Surely die. Surely die. So, suffering is the consequences of human sin against God. Amen? Adam disobeyed God, which uh, the Lord said, do not eat the fruit or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But we know the story. Amen? That's the only rule or that's the only commandment that God said to Adam. But because of his rebellion to God, because of this uh, disobedience, because of temptation, he fall to temptation of Satan. Amen? Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen? And what happened? Hallelujah. Trouble started, problems started. Their relationship with God was broken. Before, when they were perfectly, hallelujah, sinless before God, they enjoy, amen, the presence of the Lord. They enjoy the, the uh, freely, amen, all God's uh, provision. And because of their sin, they become what? Distant to God. Their, their relationship with God, amen, hallelujah, created so much problem because of sin. They were cast out from the Garden of Eden. And God cursed the ground. Amen, cursed the ground. And he said, because of what you did, Adam, the ground is cursed. Men in toil, in sweat, you will till the ground.
but you will what? Harvest thorns and thistles. The same thing with Eve. So because Eve sinned against God, she bear what? The pain of childbearing because of sin. So you know when God uh, confront Adam, why? What have you done? Did you eat the fruit of the tree of the of the uh, knowledge of good and evil? You know Adam. What is his reaction? Is he blamed God? He blamed God. He said, "Because of this woman you gave me, that's why." Amen. I tempt. I got tempted to eat the this fruit. So most people, I mean, when they are, hallelujah, uh, experiencing suffering in this world, you can see that a lot of people are blaming God. Blaming God because of their problems. Bla bla blaming God because of their pain. Blaming God because of their what? Of their sadness. Blaming God. But actually, it is because of our sin. There is hunger, there is thirst, there is temptation, there is shame, there is persecution, there is uh, nakedness, there, there is bereavement, there is mourning, there is betrayal, there is pain or suffering of injustice, mockery, and death. Because we are living in a broken world. We are living in a broken world. So what happened when Adam sinned? In Romans 5.12 it says, Therefore just as through one man's sin, one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin. And thus death spread to all men because all sinned. All of us are sinners and we fall short to the glory of the Lord. There is no one righteous, no, not one. All of us are sinners. You may say, oh, I didn't kill or murder anyone. I didn't uh, uh, steal. But how many of you can tell me that you didn't lie even once? Because lying is sin. The Bible, and Jesus said, you lie because your father is Satan, because he's the father of lies. When we are lying, amen, it shows who are, who, who is our father. And that is the devil. Amen. So lying is sin. So all of us, Sin against God. And the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Amen? We are uh, justly, amen, sentenced to die, to be destroyed, to be punished, because all of us sin against God. So there is so much suffering because sin is spread to all the word and because all sin hallelujah some suffering is due to wrong choices or sinful choices but some is because simply because we are in the word that is what that is corrupt we are here in the fallen world so the aspect of suffering should drive us men when we are when we are suffer when we experience suffering the first thing uh, we uh, we uh, think is how can I escape to this situation men we dream of a better word a better word that is free from sin so a word that God only amen can again establish so that suffering is what? Is consequence is the consequences of sin. 
what's the third truth about suffering? That suffering is God's tool, amen, to a deaf world. Suffering is God's tool to a deaf world. He allows suffering so that this deaf and world will hear or will know God. In Isaiah 26, 9, it says, When your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Is this the first time you read this word? It's in the Bible. When your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. There's a man or there's a king, amen. Uh, I don't know if you know King Ma King Manasseh. In Isaiah, in uh, sorry, in uh, Hallelujah, in, in Chronicles, Second Chronicles, King Manasseh is the son of King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was a righteous king, amen. He pleased the Lord. But what happened to King Manasseh is a uh, uh, reverse of his father. He's a wicked king. So wicked that uh, King Manasseh, you know, worshiped Baal. Amen. He worshiped Ashtoreth. He consulted fortune tellers, witchcraft. He consulted spiriticism, omen, so many things. He worshiped moon, stars. He rebelled against God. Manasseh rebelled against God. He never consulted God. So what happened is because of that, amen, hallelujah, Israel was so low in immorality. In morality. People, amen, worship gods, which the Lord said, do not worship any gods. Worship only the Lord God. Not only that, you know one of the wicked and terrible thing that uh, Manasseh did is he sacrificed his sons. He burned his son as an offering to gods. You know? Because there are common belief when you are worshiping a God, if you want blessing, offer blood, human blood. And that's what Manasseh did. He offered his son. Because he faced battles, enemies, and he wants his gods, amen, to protect him so that he sacrificed his son. Sons, not only sons, sons. To the valley. I said, the valley of Himon. So that is Manasseh. But one thing happened to Manasseh. Amen. God allowed suffering in the life of Manasseh. In Second Chronicles. And we can read here what happened to him. When he was in distress. Who are you experiencing distress? Stress. Distress is stress. It happened in the Old Testament also. It's not new. It happened to a king. When he was in distress, he entreated the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He prayed to him. And God was moved by his entreaty and heard his plea and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. God used suffering, amen, as a tool for us to realize that there is God. That our help comes only from the Lord. 
How many of you have watched Narnia? You know, the author of Narnia is C.S. Lewis. It's a Christian. It's a Christian movie. Amen? It's a Christian movie. And C.S. Lewis wrote in his book, We can ignore even pleasure, but pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures. You know, when we are enjoying uh, 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 blessing, we know that there's God, but it's just like a whisper to us. Amen? He speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. No doubt, pain as God's megaphone is a terrible instrument. It may lead See, there are two things. It may lead to final and unrepented rebellion or it will give the only opportunity the bad man, the bad man can have for amendment. It removes the veil. It plants the flag of truth within the fortress of the rebel soul. Amen. And I believe many of us here, amen, can testify about that. When you, amen, when, when Jesus found you, we were in a miserable situation. Amen. We felt so empty in this world, and God found us. Jesus found us. We find Jesus. There are two things, amen, the suffering may bring to us. Amen. It says, maybe it's a final or unrepented rebellion or what? Or an opportunity for an amendment with God. There are two things. God can be your monster during suffering or God can be your master. That is the possible, two possible things that will happen to us spiritually. So now, why God allowed COVID-19? Amen. We've been praying for two years. When it will stop. All the pain that uh, this COVID-19 brought to us, all the trouble, is really, amen, unexplainable. So many people still cannot, uh, you know, move on with the pain and suffering that it brought to us. Why God allowed COVID-19? Generally speaking, one of God's purpose, purposes in trials is to get the world's attention of themselves, to get their attention and to bring their attention to God. Their creator, savior, so this is the biggest part of the answer to the question, why would God allow COVID-19? Praise the Lord. So now millions are suddenly asking that question right now. You know, believers or non-believers, which means that God is on their minds. Right? Those people who... Uh, never, never pray to God. Now they are praying to God. They are asking about God. They are coming to church. Amen? They are opening their Bible. Because God desires, He allowed this to happen because He desires that all people will earnestly seek Him. Amen? And to find Him. To discover Him. That he is what? He is actually close to us. He is not far from us. That's why Jesus says, Come unto me, all of you who are, who are carrying heavy burden. Learn of me, for I am gentle. Amen? And I can give you rest. It's there. It's still the invitation is open, but he wants us to come to him. 
and through this burden or suffering, amen, He allowed it to, to, happy, to happen in our lives so that we may seek Him, find Him, to discover Him. What else God desires for us is to sense that our own weaknesses, you know, you can see what happened during this time, during this pandemic. We learned that our money cannot save us, our intellect cannot save us, influence cannot save us, our strength cannot save us. Hallelujah. We learn, we sense our weaknesses and our need of God so that we can put our trust in Him. What else? God desires that people to fear Him, to fear God, amen, to respect God, to revere God, to owe Him. God desires that people will love Him more, amen, than their own lives, and to show love. He wants to show love. And he wants us to show our God gratitude to God. Are you grateful to God that you are here today? Yes. We are alive. Of all these things that happened to us during this pandemic, we are still here. Amen. And of course, God has still good plans for us. He wants us to show our gratitude but al by also fel uh, helping our fellow human beings. See? There's so many things that happen, right? We began to show, uh, uh, to, to help people. Amen? When you see they are suffering, we began to, to what? Hallelujah. To love them, to care for them, to help them. So that is, we can see that the suffering is also, I mean, a blessing. The Bible says in James 1, count it all joy, count it all joy when you face various trials of many kinds. For the testing of our faith, what? Develop perseverance and character. You know, whenever God allows suffering to us, He didn't give it to us, I mean, to destroy us. Let us always have that mindset. He didn't give problems or or he allow problems or suffering to us to destroy us. Satan, that is what Satan's uh, mission to us. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God, amen, hallelujah, come. Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. So God desires also that we will shift our focus to him. Amen? Our focus and our affection to Him, our focus and attention away from this temporary troubled world and shift our attention to, amen, things that are eternal and heavenly. Yeah, that? That's why when Paul, he wrote in his one of his epistles, Paul said, this light affliction cannot compare Amen to the glory that will be revealed in us. You know, you know, uh, Apostle Paul uh, experiences uh, uh, persecution. Amen. He was stoned because of, uh, of of sharing the gospel, because of helping people. Amen. He was persecuted many times. He was uh, almost die. Amen. Because of uh, this beating, many things. He lost everything. But he said, this light affliction, whenever maybe he was stoned by people, he's saying, this is just a light affliction. I'm looking to the eternal and heavenly things. The glory that will be revealed. If I die today, this is just a light affliction compared to the glory that's waiting for me. Amen. I experienced COVID, me and my wife. You know, the good thing is when you are facing, amen, 
death when you assured of your salvation you will smile amen entering the glory of the Lord I said Lord I cannot breathe tonight it's okay I know where I'm going I know you will take care of my family I'm ready amen because we are just living temporary here in this world So we need to shift our focus on the things that are eternal. Unlike in this world, if you save treasure in this world, there will be what? Thieves, there will be the rust. But if you what? Save your treasures in heaven. There will be no there is no one who will steal. There is no thief. There is no rust, moth. That is uh, why God allowed COVID. You know, God allows, allows us to be broken so that we may be blessed. You know that? The Bible says, blessed are the broken. Those who are broken hearted are so near to God. We are broken to bless. You know, when we are broken, it didn't stop God to use that broken vessel. Right? It didn't stop Him. Although suffering is not part of His goal to humanity, God uses it somehow, amen, to be part of our lives to refine us. To refine us as a person. You know that? Like a refinement, like a, 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 a silver that is refined or gold that is refined. To refine us as a human being. God can use suffering to develop, then to develop us to become a better person. Better person with better relationship with God. Hallelujah. Not only a person, of course, nation. He allows suffering so that nation will learn about righteousness. People. The people who can love and enjoy God forever. If there is God, why there is suffering? You know, I've heard this to many people who Choose not to believe in God. He's saying, if there's God who is loving, why He will allow people to go to hell? Why He will allow people to suffer in hell forever if there is God? You know, one of my, my uh, answer, my reply to them is, do you know about a man who is perfect, who didn't do any mistake? But he suffered. He suffered for the mistake of others. He suffered for the sin of others. And that is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Why there is suffering? My reply is, why God allow His Son to suffer? Did you ever think about that? When we, when we begin to, to blame God about the suffering, let us be reminded why he allowed his son to suffer so much for us. He left his glory. The son of God. He was put to shame. He was rejected, insulted, mocked, beaten. He carried that heavy cross. His hands and feet were nailed to the cross. His body was nailed to the cross, hung to the cross. He wore the thorn of, thorn of the crown of thorns. He was totally broken. His body was broken. 
for you and for me. And he didn't even question his father. In his agony, he said to his father, Father, let your will be done. Why did Jesus have to experience so much suffering? Christ's suffering is the highest display of the glory of the grace of God. You know, creation exists. Creation exists to display the glory of God. No? Angels listen to his word and do his word. Angels serve God. Angels praise God, glorifying God. The universe, all these planets, sun, moon, solar system, galaxy, universe, display to give God pleasure. To give God glory. It says in the Bible, all his works, amen, shows God's dominion. Creation exists to show God's glory. But the glory of God shines most, amen, most brightly, most fully, most beautiful in the manifestation of the glory of His grace when Christ suffered on that cross. Jesus suffering on the cross showed the devastating I mean, nature of sin. The wrath of God, the cruelty of humanity, and the hatred of Satan. You know, at Calvary, you know, those people was allowed, I mean, to do to do the worst thing to the Son of God, to the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, who is became our de redeemer and our savior. Satan may have thought, I have won a great victory. But it was through the cross that the Son of God triumphed, amen, over Satan, sin, and death. Suffering is the consequences of sin, but Jesus triumphed over sin and over death. Yes, we still, you know, the memory verse, it says, in this world you will have tribulation. That is the what Jesus said in John 16. And it's true. Even we Christians, we are not immune. Amen to suffering, problems, troubles, pain, etc. Because we are still in this world. But his triumph is not just in this world. His triumph is eternity. That we will not suffer, amen, in eternity. That we will not destroy in hell, in hell destruction. Hallelujah. That is the manifestation, amen, how God display the glory of His grace in the suffering of Christ. That once we don't have hope, but now we have hope in Christ. Once we, God, we, once we don't be, receive the mercy of God, but now we receive the mercy of God. We are undeserving. I mean, because of our sins. But Jesus chose to suffer on that cross so that we may be healed. Jesus Christ, amen, the Son of God came in the flesh to suffer and die, and by that suffering and death, we can be saved. We, undeserving sinners, amen, like you and me. That's what it says in Luke 24. He said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins 
should be preached in his name to all. A few weeks from now, the world will celebrate or we will, uh, hallelujah, will celebrate, amen, this uh, Lenten uh, season or Holy Week. Do we really understand the suffering of Christ? Praise the Lord. Satan may have thought he won a great victory. Satan who comes to steal and kill and destroy. But the Bible says, now the time for judgment of this world, now the prince of this world, Satan, will be driven out. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan has no power in you anymore. If you are a follower and believer of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We are victorious because Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. He displayed this greatness, the greatness of the glory of that grace, amen, for us to enjoy his creation, his creatures. Amen. That even though there is suffering, that we may still experience, but just like Paul, amen, when we compare that to the glory that will be revealed in us, when we face him in eternity, it cannot be compared. This light affliction, this trouble, this pain, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's see. In John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, Jesus was speaking, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In Jesus' name. Thank the Lord because of his suffering. Hallelujah. And trials and persecution in this life. We as Christian, we as believers in Christ may result in strengthening our faith, amen, may result in blessings and reward in heaven. That's why when Peter, the early Christian, amen, uh, was uh, persecuted, see what happened in Acts 5? When these leaders, amen, try to stop them to preach the gospel, and they try to beat them, try to imprison them, what did they say? They departed from the presence of the council. It's like they are them against the word, against these leaders, against this council. They departed from the, the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple, in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know uh, the early Christians, if you will uh, look at the, the history, I mean, how the emperor, the Roman emperor, I mean, persecuted Christian. They were fed in the lion. They were what? Sown in half. They were tortured. In Hebrew 11, it says, this faithful man, amen, although they didn't see the promise, but they still, they kept their faith in God. Maybe now, we will not see it now. I mean, the promise. But eventually, I mean, when we see him, we will receive the eternal promise of God to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank Lord, you know, when they were, uh, you know, in the, in the stadium, Christians, family, I mean, children, all People, old men, old women, amen, will put in the in the middle of the of the stadium a Roman uh, Colosseum, and they will release the lion, they will kill them 
you know, they you can see that I mean, in many museums, paintings of what happened I mean, to early Christians. You know, when we see that picture, or maybe we can see that in Google or, or YouTube, you may think, oh, they are poor people. And they will see all the audience, I mean, cheering, laughing, rejoicing, I mean, when they are eating and tearing the flesh of these Christian believers. You may think they are poor and miserable. But see the big picture. Who is the miserable in that picture? Is it the saved people or the unsaved? Because eventually every, everyone dies. And where are they right now? If they didn't receive Jesus as their Savior, those people who are cheering, amen, and rejoicing because they are being killed, definitely what the Bible says, they will suffer in hell, destruction, and eternity. Who is poor? Who is miserable? You know, we cannot measure our life here, the success in this life, by having all, I mean, the blessings of material here in this world. You cannot measure the quality of life here when you're eating the best food and uh, go to the best restaurant. That is not the real quality of life here on earth is to know Jesus, to know God, to serve Him, and to die for Him. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let us pray, and I ask you, amen, to all to stand. Let us pray. If you have come here for the first time, or you may ha have heard Amen. This teaching, no? the truth about suffering and persecution. And now you realize, hallelujah, that God is not to be blamed. Otherwise, God is all we need. Open your heart to Him. He said, Come to me, all of you who are heavy laden. Learn of me, for I am gentle, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Maybe you're carrying that burden for so many years. Resentment, bitterness. You're suffering for many Days, many years with this burden. You cannot let go of the pain. Because somebody hurt you. Somebody betrayed you. Right now, God wants you to be released from that burden. All you need to do is to come to Him right now. If you are that person... I pray for you. Open your heart to God. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for saving us. We are undeserving of your mercy. We are undeserving of the privilege and the blessing. heavenly blessing of God but we thank you God because Lord you will not stop loving us you will not stop Lord hallelujah searching for us Lord I am lost. I am lost in this world. 
I cannot bear this suffering anymore. This heartache, this pain. I don't know where to go. Lord Jesus, thank you. For you are the door. That whenever the sheep comes, they will come and find pasture. I'm that sheep who was lost. Thank you, Lord, for finding me, O oh God. Who am I that you are mindful of me? You who created the sun, the, the moon, the stars, all that is in the universe, all that is in the heaven, all that is in the earth. Who am I that you have visited me more than 2,000 years ago? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He left the glory of heaven to live a life of humility. To live a life, a simple life, so that simple people can come to Him. And that was 2,000 years ago. And even right now, you are here. Still searching for these lost souls, O oh God. Lord, I suffer too much. And thank you, Lord. Because you are the way for me, O oh God, Lord. To be released from this pain and suffering. Said, Lord Jesus, come. I come to you. I cast my burden unto you. Because you care for me. You care for me, O oh God. You don't want me to suffer in eternity. And right now, I accepted you as my Lord and my Savior. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit, that I may learn more of you. To begin this adventure, this journey with you. I thank you. Lord God, I pray that you will comfort those who are suffering from sickness, pain, hunger, bereavement, persecution, betrayal, injustices. Give them, O oh Lord, confidence in the power of your grace. That even when they are afraid, O oh God, give them, O oh God, courage. That they may put their whole trust in you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you are a suffering God. Thank you for your patience in suffering. For the glory of God is displayed. You gave us an example, O oh God, of obedience to your Father's will. O oh God, do not leave us, do not forsake us. That is your promise to us. Be near to us, O oh Lord, all the time. All the time of our weaknesses and pain. Sustain us, O oh God, by your power and by your grace. That our strength and courage may not fail. Father God, Holy Spirit, heal the sick, the wounded, according to your will. Help us to always believe that whatever affliction cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in eternity, the glory of your presence, my Lord and my God. Just continue to raise your hand, amen, as I read, amen. Hallelujah, in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord and everyone say aloud amen God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, continue to give God a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you all and those who are watching online. Amen. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. God bless. Take care. Stay safe, everyone.